take off the lens cover. And I'm going to turn it on. So remember, here's the on-off switch right here. Turn it on. Just open this screen here. So you can see what the screen looks like like that. So let me just swivel it. Tuck it neatly back inside here. And of course, when you swivel it, the screen automatically orientates. Um, if you, if, let me show what I'm talking about. So right now it's like that, right? So if I take it out like that and I start to turn it, you notice it turns upside down because it knows I'm going to turn it that way, right? So it reorients itself. So if I'm going to turn it back, once I start to swivel it, it actually would reorientate. If you look closely at the screen, there you go. So what I want to quickly go is just go through and describe each of these exposure settings uh, on this wheel. And what's good about it too, it actually has like a, a small little uh, description of each of the um, uh, exposure settings when you're, you're actually using the camera. So let me just go, um, this first one here, um, it's a picture of a side of a woman's head. That's actually called portrait mode. Uh, so portrait mode, that's the automatic scene mode and that's designed to produce softly focused backgrounds and flattering skin tone. So that's portrait mode. Now I'm going to turn the wheel uh, clockwise here. What's the next setting here? So here we have landscape mode. Now with landscape mode, uh, that's an automatic scene mode and that would keep like both near and distant objects um, in sharp focus and it boosts color and contrast for dramatic landscape pictures and when you're in this mode the flash is automatically disabled right so that's your landscape mode now close-up mode um, this is designed for close-ups so it's that's self-explanatory right so um, this mode this produces softly focused backgrounds and is suitable for close-ups of like plants and flowers and you know if you're taking pictures of bugs and nature uh, close-up mode is important next we have my favorite mode and that's sports mode so you have things moving in motion right so fast moving objects um, so for fast moving objects the shutter speed is going to be pretty fast um, so that it captures those objects with no blur and with this mode as well, the flash is disabled. So in special seat mode, uh, special scene mode, we have the night portrait mode. Uh, we strongly recommend that you use a tripod for this. You want the, you know, the camera to be as still as possible. And with night portrait mode, obviously, um, it combines the flash with a very slow shutter speed. And that would actually produce a brighter background, right? especially if you have dim lightning uh, when you're when you're taking portraits uh, so you the reason you should use a, a tripod is because you don't want the camera to shake and obviously you want your subject to remain as still as possible during the exposure so that a very very clear crisp picture can be taken uh, now with manual exposure the user would control the shutter speed and the um, f-stop so you have full control over the color, uh, the flash, as well as other advanced settings. So I would recommend if you are uh, an experienced photographer that you use manual mode. If not, don't worry, you have a ton of other features um, or modes, I should call it exposure modes that you can use um, that does all the hard work for you, right? You just have to know, you know what condition you're using it in. So if you're gonna be you know, sports mode for fast moving objects, are you gonna be taking pictures at night? Do you need to use a tripod? Are you doing close-ups? That kind of thing, right? And there are modes for all. There, there are exposure modes for all of those different um, use cases. So AV. Now that's the aperture priority. Um, now with the AV mode or aperture priority auto exposure, um, you as the user would um, select the f-stop, and the camera will select the shutter speed. That will produce a good exposure. Um, Again, you would have full control over the color, flash, and other advanced settings.
So before we go any further, I just want to talk about some uh, photography terms that you should know about uh, because it, it is important, right? Because the way these SLR cameras are designed, there, there's, a, there's an assumption that you know uh, at least some basics of photography, right? So first off, let's talk about the aperture. So the aperture is analogous to like your pupil in your eye, right? It pretty much controls how much light enters the camera, right? Now, the aperture can change in size, and, um, you know, as I said, it's just like the pupil in your eye, right? When there's a lot of light, your pupil gets small, so that, you know, controls the amount of light that's hitting your retina. Same type of principle. So instead of your retina, uh, the camera has something in the back called the CCDs, and all they do is that they convert light into the pixels that you get in your picture, right? So, anyway, just, just think of the aperture as that hole. Uh, that controls the amount of light that enters the camera. So, the brighter the scene, right, um, of course, the smaller the aperture is gonna get, right, to control that light. And then in darker light, when there's not much light at all, or low light situations, then the aperture is gonna have to open up, right? Same analogy when it comes to your eyes, right? Your pupils get small when you're in a, a bright room, right? Because you don't want that light to blind your eyes. And then when you're in a in a dark room, of course, your pupils open all the way up to let in as much light as possible. Same thing with a camera. Actually, a camera is pretty much uh, a mechanical version of the human eye, to be honest, which is pretty cool. Now, I did mention earlier something called the f-stop number. So, so what is that exactly? Well, you see, the f-stop number, it's determined by a simple equation. And that equation is the focal length of the lens divided by the diameter of the aperture will give you your f stop number it's that simple and you know the focal length that's pretty much the lens's field of view they usually call it the angle of view sometimes and all that is it's the width and the height of the area that the lens can capture right and and the focal length you usually will find that on, on the right, uh, on the camera lens. So when you look at your lens, let me just take the lens off here for a second. You will notice that this particular lens that I have, see this 18-55 millimeters? That refers to the focal length of this lens. So. 18 millimeters is wide angle, right? And 55 millimeters is more zoomed. So when you zoom your lens in, you're gonna zoom between the 18 and 55 millimeter setting, right? Of course, MM stands for millimeter. And what is this? It's the distance between your camera sensor and the point of convergence in the lens. So pretty much in layman's terms, the further we the point of convergence is from the sensor, the more zoomed you will be. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it may sound more confusing than it really is, but um, uh, here, let me draw a diagram. Now in this diagram here, here's a side, um, a, a, a side view of a lens um, with the, the sensor being uh, located inside the camera, right? Um, so, Pretty much right here, you can see the point of convergence. That's that's the point of convergence that I was talking about earlier. So when you're zooming in, it's pretty much the distance between that point of convergence and the sensor that's located inside the camera. That will actually determine you know how zoomed in your photos will be, right? And that's pretty much the focal length, right? So in summary, the focal length, as you can see in this diagram. Um, I have a set of 30 millimeters. It's the distance between the point of convergence, right, in your lens assembly, and the sensor in your camera. And when you 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 uh, zoom in and out, that distance, that focal length will, will will change. So when you look at that lens that I was showing you earlier, you know the 18 millimeter to 55 millimeter, those are the, the end points if you want if you want to look at it that way, uh, or your range of motion um, in millimeters that you have. Uh, when you want to zoom and well, by zoom where this is optical zoom this is not digital zoom um, uh, so yeah so that that's that's all it is now this next mode 
It's the TV mode is the shutter priority auto exposure. So you as the user would set the shutter speed and the camera will select the f-stop. Now remember we talked about f-stop. Uh, that will produce a good exposure. Now full control over color, flash and other advanced settings you will have as well. Now P, that's your programmed auto exposure mode. Um, here the camera would select both the f-stop which is the aperture setting uh, and the shutter speed and that would ensure, ensure a proper exposure and you can choose from multiple combinations of the two settings right again you would have full control over the color um, flash and other settings and then here we have the scene intelligent auto mode um, scene intelligent auto mode uh, that's where you you know there's a completely it, it's it's this is auto this is photography on on autopilot right um, completely automatic photography uh, in this situation, your camera would analyze the scene. It will try to choose a setting that, that you know, produce the best results. So if you're a beginner, an amateur photographer, I would strongly recommend using the scene intelligent auto mode because there's enough intelligence packed inside of here to determine, you know, okay, there's a fast moving object. I know which mode to go into. Or you have poor light. I definitely know what exposure to set. Or I have very, very bright light. I know the exposure I need, or we're zooming in very, very closely on this object. I know exactly which exposure mode to go into. So that's the scene intelligent auto mode. Now, of course, this is this flash off mode. Um, so flash off mode, pretty self-explanatory. It's uh, the same as the scene intelligent auto mode, but the flash is disabled. So this is perfect if you're going to be using this at a rock concert or a concert where you're not allowed to use flashes right because you could distract the performer or if you're like in a museum or something uh and uh or you know any place that where, where, where flash is not allowed um you def definitely recommend using that mode now this one is called the creative auto mode um now that's the same thing as the c intelligent auto mode but you get basic control over the flash and the amount of background blurring. Um, so this is really great if you really want to manually control uh, the settings such that you can enhance the foreground as opposed to the background. Um, especially if you want to isolate you know, images or objects in the foreground um, and blur the background and you want to do it manually, this is the, the option, the um, exposure mode that you want to use. Now this mode also provides limited control over the exposure and uh, color through the shoot by ambiance feature. Right. So let's look at some other tech specs. So this has a sensor resolution of 18 megapixels. The optical sensor type is a CMOS. Now it has a total of 18.5 million pixels and an effective sensor resolution of 18 million pixels. It has an optical sensor size of 14.9 by 22.3 millimeters and it has a 1.6 field of view crop factor. The Rebel T5i also comes with sensor dust reduction. Now there are a ton of other tech specs so I'm just highlighting some of them. Um, it has a hot shoe type flash for the camera and it has an AF illuminator, wireless off camera control and of course the flash mode is auto mode. Now this thing can work in cold environments as low as 32 degrees Fahrenheit and as high as 104 degrees Fahrenheit and it has a humidity range of about 0 to 85 percent. Now the Rebel T5i has a uh, max shutter speed of 1 divided by 4,000 seconds so that's 1 4,000th of a second and uh, min shutter speed is about 30 seconds. Now the display format, it's 1.04 million pixels and the display form factor is a folding one which I did show you, right? Which is cool for taking self images as well and selfies. Well, self videos I should call it and selfies. The T5i also comes with a 7.5 times uh, zoom lens. So that's 7.5x optical zoom. Um, as far as the construction of the lens, there are 12 groups and 16 elements. 
um, minimum focal length as we discussed before it's 18 millimeters and the maximum is 135 millimeters um, the focal length it's equivalent to the 35 millimeter camera now the min focus distance is 15.4 inches the zoom adjustment obviously is manual now when it comes to memory and storage it supports a number of memory cards um, the SD SD8C the SD8C UHS Dash I memory cards are all supported, as well as the XDXC, that's a high capacity memory card, as well as the SDXC UHS Dash I memory card. And there are a number of video capture formats, all H.264, and they range from 640 by 480, which is 25 frames per second, all the way up to 1920 by 1080, uh, 30 frames per second, which is a, a very familiar format. That's our HDMI, uh, um, you know, high def. Uh, 1080p format so the video capture uh, it's uh, the format is H2, H.264 so the video capture format that's H.264 and it starts from 640 by 480 and that's 25 frames per second and it goes all the way up to our 1920 by 1080 um, uh, video capture uh, and it's 30 frames per second now this trusty little gadget can do continuous shooting speed at 5 frames per second and when you're using the self timer uh, the range is 2 to 10 seconds. Um, now the battery that comes included with this is an 1120 mAh battery um, and it's a lithium iron rechargeable battery. Image recording formats are popped in the JPEG, uh, RAW, RAW plus JPEG formats. Um, so max video resolution 1920 by 1080 and uh, high definition video support obviously that's 1080p face detection is included as well this camera can do pretty much everything and for the price it's pretty good so the width of the camera is about 5.2 inches and I'm talking about the camera itself not the lens setting uh, lens um, housing so width is 5.2 inches height 3.9 inches and has it does have some weight to it and you know what SLR camera doesn't weigh uh, weigh a bit right um, and I always say that weight means money right it's an expensive camera so it has to feel like it's expensive and it really is this camera weighs about 18.52 ounces now one quick thing I want to mention as well about this camera uh, is the battery so it comes with that lithium-ion battery it's 1120 milliampere hour now on one full charge you can get about 170 photo shots um, 200 shots, 470 shots, or 550 shots, depending on the, of course, the mode that you're shooting in. Um, and one other thing I want to mention quickly, this flash here actually comes up. It's actually built into the camera, and uh, depending uh, on the mode you're using, if there is a low light situation, that flash will automatically come up um, when you're taking your pictures. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is my initial uh, just overview of the you know Canon Rebel T5i SLR camera, you know you know to any any new newbie who's into photography, don't get scared by the SLR camera. I mean, lots of them do come with um, uh, a feature, uh, you know, auto feature that you know does all the all the hard work for you in terms of determining the you know the, the light uh, and you know the type of mode. You know, if you're shooting fast objects or close up objects, or if you want to blur the background, or if you're you want you know to enhance the foreground it, you know there is modes on on this camera that that particular mode that i show you that it does all that thinking for you and gives you the best picture and exposure mode for what you want to do so you know in time you know when you play around with the, with the slr cameras especially like one like this you will automatically get familiar with all the features um and what's great about slr cameras as well um you know depending on how much money you have in your budget you can change the uh the lens housing right this one came stock with it but if you want more powerful lenses with more optical zoom uh, you can actually attach them, deep attach them and detach them to this camera so that's the initial review of the Canon T5i Rebel SLR camera so I hope you enjoyed that video now I'm going to ask you to do two things before you leave one there's a button right up here on the screen to my right here click on that and that will take you to our website, www.redtechpop.com. When you get on that site, there will be a button there where you can actually sign up for our newsletter. 
And when you do sign up for our newsletter by entering in your email address, you will automatically be entered into all of our tech giveaways. And by tech giveaways, these are some typical examples of what we will be giving away. Uh, and these are some examples, there's other stuff as well. Um, and the good news is, you're, you know, you just have to enter your email address once and you know, it will automatically be entered into the pool every time we do a draw. Um, and we will use that email address, of course, to, to contact the winner, to tell them, hey, you've won something. Um, and you know, it's, it's, uh, it's really cool. And of course, the newsletter will have you know, you know, updates on tech reviews, what's coming up new, uh, you know, what's coming up next, um, you know, new stuff uh, in the industry, and even information on, on future giveaways and stuff, right? So it's really, 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 really nice newsletter that we're going to be uh, uh, sending out. And one other thing is, on this side on the screen here, up here, on my left, uh, you click on that and you will subscribe to the channel. Now, by subscribing, of course, you'll be you know at the forefront of any new things that are happening, any new videos that are coming out. Um, and what I will also be doing is I'll be doing videos where I'll be talking about what we're going to be doing as a next giveaway, right? So you want to be you know subscribed, tuned in to that as well. So it's going to be a fun year and fun years to come as well. So yeah, that being said, you guys have a great day.